Today, I'm gonna to share with you a very powerful tool for setting goals in such a way that you're much more likely to actually reach those goals. So let's dive right in. Usually when we set goals, we set goals about things we want to accomplish, things we want to do, milestones we want to reach, and things we want to have. So those are goals like, I want to be accepted into this university, I want to reach a certain income level, I want to have, I want to be fit and have visible abs, I want to have a hot girlfriend, that kind of thing. What most people don't know is that this is the weakest kind of goal you can set for yourself. Let's call it a level one goal. Now look, it's better to have a level one goal than to have no goals at all. A goal gives you something to orient towards and certainly you're better off having level one goals than just kind of being adrift and not even knowing where you want to go in life. So it's better than nothing, but there are much more powerful ways to set goals for yourself. Now, with the examples I gave, notice how all of these goals are kind of out there and distant. You're like, what goals, right? What do you want to have at some point in the future? Maybe it's very far in the future. And that's part of the problem. One way in which to make a goal much more powerful is to bring it into the present. A level two goal is a process-oriented goal. So that would be, for example, I'm going to study for two hours every day, or I'm going to work on my side hustle or my business every single day. I'm going to go to the gym five times a week and do intermittent fasting, or I'm going to work on my social skills every weekend and take up at least one hobby where I can meet new people. So see how I've taken all of our level one goals and I've attached a process to it that you can do right now. By doing that, we're taking where you are now and connecting it to the distant goal you want to reach. So it's no longer just what do you want, but how are you going to get there? So if we dig into just one of the examples, you want to reach a certain level of income, that's your what goal. And now you ask yourself, well, how am I going to do this? And obviously there are multiple possible answers. One of them could be, I'm going to study hard to get this certificate or get into this university, which will then give me the chance to have this job. Another answer could be, I'm going to build that side business. I'm going to invest, you know, whatever, how many ever hours a day, every day into building my product and then starting to sell it, something like that. But see how this increases your chances of reaching the goal, because now you're actually attaching it to a strategy and you can check if you're on track. Because if you have this income goal and you say, okay, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to build my own business. And then you look at, okay, how many hours have I spent last week actually working on my business? If it's like one hour, well, are you going to reach that goal? Probably not. On the other hand, if you set yourself the goal, I'm going to spend at least three hours a day working on my side hustle. And then you actually do that. Well, now that puts you in a position where not only are you already accomplishing the goal in a way, you're already doing the process, but also you can reasonably expect that eventually this is going to pay off. So that is the first tip, and this is already really useful. For any what goal you have, for any level one goal you have, attach a process to it, make it process oriented to level it up to level two. But we can take this even further, and especially for a goal like quitting porn or quitting any other kind of addiction, stopping any other bad habit, Level three is the best kind of goal to have. Level three is an identity-based goal. This is about who you want to become, what kind of a person you want to become, or an even better way to frame this is what kind of a person you choose to be. As a human being, this is really one of the most powerful things you can do. You can make a choice about how you're going to show up. You can make a choice about who you're going to be. So if you go through our examples again, it's like I choose to be someone who studies hard and puts in the work in order to get the goals. I choose to be someone who works hard with uninterrupted and focused discipline. I choose to be someone who takes care of their health and pushes themselves hard in the gym. I choose to be someone who has a problem-solving mindset and not a victim mindset. And so if I find myself lonely and I want to improve my social life, I do something about it systematically. When it comes to the example of porn, which is something I used to be addicted to, the way I think of it now is that I'm simply not the kind of person who does that kind of thing. I choose to be someone who doesn't watch porn. Now, why is that? Well, it's because I choose to be someone who has a high level of self-mastery, which also means I'm not the kind of person who goes, oh, I guess, you know, I had a little urge and I just couldn't help myself and I gave in and I did something that I decided not to do and I did it even though it's bad for me. Oh, well, I choose not to be that guy. Now, importantly, this reflects in many areas of my life. This isn't just about porn. In fact, not watching porn is almost like a side effect of all the other stuff that is important to me. So you want to choose an identity. You want to ask yourself, who do I choose to be? What kind of a person do I want to grow into? And then ask yourself, what are the values that go along with that? 
And then here's a super important part, because there's one more thing you need to do to make this actually practical, to make it real and not just wishful thinking. And it is this, once you have chosen the identity-based goal and you've explored what values go along with that, find every opportunity in your life to prove to yourself that you do indeed choose to be this kind of person. Here are a couple examples from my own life. I work out every day, I exercise in some form or other every day, and I push myself when I'm working out. This is proof that I'm the kind of person who has focus and discipline and that I'm the kind of person who's willing to be uncomfortable to reach a goal to do something that's good for me. I also frequently do things like long sauna sessions and ice baths. And with that, I prove to myself that I'm someone who cultivates self-mastery, that I'm someone who can override the urge, which is let's get out of the heat or let's get out of the cold, who can again do something uncomfortable, sit with that discomfort, that I'm someone who can go mind over body. Also, I've been an entrepreneur for many years and I've proven to myself over and over again that I'm someone who can set goals and then work hard with focus and discipline to accomplish those goals, even when things get very, very difficult. At the same time, I'm also someone who is careful about not overdoing things. So I don't push myself so hard that I burn out or I get injured and things like that. Very systematic. I can also take my foot off the gas when that's required, when that's the smarter thing to do. And with that, I prove to myself, again, that's self-mastery. I'm not just blindly going as hard as possible until I snap my back in the gym. I have a higher level of control over what I'm doing and how it affects me. And I can give you countless other examples that are all similar to this. So this is what I see when I look back at my life. I have this long track record of proof that I choose to be this person, that I cultivate to be someone who has discipline and self-mastery. Now, can you imagine how that changes my attitude when it comes to something like porn, when I have an urge? Do you see how with this kind of attitude, with this kind of identity goal and with this kind of track record, it's almost impossible to have the kind of victim mindset that you see addicts often have. Where it's like, oh, I just can't, I just can't deal with this, it's too much. And listen, I understand if that's where you are, if that's what your starting point is, because it takes time to build up this track record. So don't worry about it. This might be the very first time that you even think about this. But I'm telling you all this so that you can see the difference. Can you see how different your whole mindset, your whole thinking could be? a few months, let alone a few years from now. All right, so quick summary. Level one goals are what goals? Things you want to accomplish that are distant and out there. Level two are processed oriented how goals. What are you actually going to do on a day-to-day -day basis to accomplish that goal? Level three are who identity-based goals. Who do you choose to be? What kind of a person do you choose to be? When you make a decision about what kind of a person you choose to be, think about what values go with that and then find every opportunity in your life to prove to yourself that indeed you're choosing to be this kind of person. Any opportunity, small or large, you take it. Over time, this will completely transform how you see yourself. It will transform your mindset and it can completely remove the struggle out of a lot of things that most people always struggle with and basically never succeed at. So if you want to quit porn or you have any other big goal that you want to accomplish, now is the time to set a level three goal. Let me know what you think of this concept. And if you have any other questions, any part of this you would like me to expand on, just leave a comment below. Also, if you are on the journey of quitting porn and you want my help and you want to be in a supportive community with over a thousand other members all supporting each other, all on the journey of quitting porn and improving their lives while they do it, make sure to click the first link in the video description and join my Discord. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Watch this video next, which explains why your porn addiction could actually be the greatest opportunity you've ever had in your life. Oh.